Fermentation scares a lot of people because it's expected to be complicated. Not that day, buddy boy, all right? If you have fruit and salt, then you can make this. Yeah, that's it. So today we're going to be doing another lacto fermentation project, but this time it's going to be done with fruit, which is something that I personally think benefits massively from fermentation. I know lots of other people will agree with that. Through this method, you can basically get multiple products out of a single product. And if that ain't economical, then I don't know what it is. Plus it's cool and it's fun. Okay. And look, okay. Look, blah, blah. Going a little bit crazy right now. A little bit crazy. So with all that said, let's do this, shall we? Right, so I know we're gonna be fermenting fruit, but we need to be picking what kind of fruit. First off, whatever fruit you pick, make sure that it's not too ripe, otherwise it's just gonna get all soft and mushy and yucky. You don't want mushy yucky. Also, some fruits tend to ferment better than others. I personally think all types of stone fruit do really well. So nectarines, peaches, you know, stuff like that. I also did some tomatoes. Blueberries are great. Actually, just about any berry works. I'll put a list of my favorite fruits to ferment in the description below. Also, you can follow my Instagram and Twitter while you're down there. That's right, PR. Anyway, so the first step with all your fruits is gonna be to cut them into large pieces. For things like stone fruit, I'll usually just cut those in half or in quarters. And then things that are small like blueberries or raspberries, I just leave them whole. Also, if your fruit has a pit or a seed, be sure to remove it. Sometimes they like to be really silly and stick inside of the fruit to piss you off, as you can see here. If that's the case, you can simply just cut it in quarters as close to the pit as possible. Now, we're going to be using the Noma method here, which is a 2% salt lacto-fermentation. It's insanely easy, just sounds fancy. So just get the weight of your processed fruit in grams, then multiply that number by 0 0.02, and the number you get from that will be the gram weight of salt that you need. If you don't have a kitchen scale yet, you really should get one. I mean, if you at this point, you should. I'll link to the one that I use in the description. And it's gonna be the same 2% for every fruit. Tomatoes, blueberries, plums, peaches, you know, you name it. Then you're just gonna take whatever fruit that is, and then take that weighed out portion of sea salt or kosher salt or whatever, just make sure it's not iodized. Sprinkle it all over your fruit and then toss your fruit in the salt to evenly distribute it. Now once it's all nice and salted, the next part you can do two different ways. Now the preferred way that I would go would be with a vac machine. You know, vacuum seal it like you're gonna be putting in a sous vide. I know not everybody has one. There's a, uh, the one that I'm using is only like 30 bucks, which I'll link below. But if you don't wanna do that, you can also just do it in a jar. Although the vacuum sealing method is so much easier. For the vacuum machine, just put your fruit in the bag and sort of arrange it nicely and then just vacuum seal it. That's it. Just make sure that any juices come out don't, you know, end up in your machine. Now, if you're doing it in a jar, place your fruit in a large jar of whatever you can find and then place some sort of weight on top of it. You know, you can use a bag of water. You can use fermentation weights. Basically, you need the fruit to eventually expel enough juice that it's submerged in its own liquid. If it doesn't, then it's not going to work. Then just cover that jar with cheesecloth or a kitchen towel. And then whichever method you choose to use, leave it out at room temperature for four to seven days. You're gonna gauge doneness based on its flavor. If you want it to taste more fermented, you let it go a little longer. Just try not to surpass about seven days. For me, my indicator with the vacuum bags is you can literally see them ballooning. And once they're so ballooned that they're like a tight, tight balloon, they're about to pop, that's a pretty good indicator that they're done. Now, every fruit is gonna have its own distinct quality when it's fermented. That's the beauty of it. I personally love, love, love the taste of the lacto-fermented tomatoes and the juice that they leave behind is just so packed with umami. Once these are done, just make sure to separate the fruit from the liquid because they both have their own uses. And you can do that real easily by pouring it through a mesh strainer set over a bowl. Okay, so you've got your lacto-fermented fruits and juices, but now what do we do with them? Well, first let's start talking about just the lacto-fermented fruit itself. Now, the easiest way to use this would be to just literally put the fruit on top of some pancakes or waffles or in some yogurt. I put the lacto-blueberries on these nice stack of buttermilk pancakes, and they were great. I also topped it with lacto bloob juice and maple syrup. One of my favorite applications while doing this video was by making something similar to bruschetta. I toasted ciabatta bread, then rubbed it with the cut face of a garlic clove, topped it with lacto-tomatoes after draining all of its liquid off, some shavings of parmigiano reggiano a drizzle of lacto tomato juice, which by itself is the most savory tart thing you'll ever taste. Some extra virgin olive oil, basil, flaky salt, always, and fresh cl and fresh cracked black pepper. Took me about one minute to put together and it was so delicious and full of umami from the fermentation. Yeah, 10 out of 10 would do again. Also made a nice little relish for some fish using equal parts lacto white peach and castelvetrano olives, a little bit of lacto white peach juice, and some extra virgin olive oil. And then I just sort of mixed it around and put it on top of some seared fish and that was wonderful. That just gives you an idea that you can use it like fresh fruit but just with a more flavorful punch. You can also totally take these if you have a dehydrator, which I'm using the Sahara dehydrator. I'll have a link in the description for this. You can also take those fruits a whole nother level if you dehydrate them until they're chewy. 
which you'll do at about 40 degrees Celsius. After I dehydrated some of them, I actually decided to rehydrate some of them in sort of a rose syrup, which is basically just equal parts sugar and water and then a couple drops of rose water. And then I poured that over it and let it sit for a couple of days. It goes great sliced with cheese or with some meat like prosciutto. So that's just a couple ways that you can use the fruit, but the possibilities are really honestly limitless. Now as for just the juice, you can use it for a lot of things. You can use it for dressings or vinaigrettes I did on this salad. You can also use it to brine stuff. I even used the lacto-fermented tomato juice to poach shrimp in and it was incredible. I just got it at lightly simmering, tossed in some shrimp, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of yuzu kosho, fresh parsley, some garlic and bay leaves, and just let it simmer until they were cooked. And it was it was amazing. Obviously, you seasoned with salt. Also, if you're into panzanella, instead of doing the typical dressing that you would, just using that lacto tomato juice, yeah. Obviously, I have some, some sort of attachment to it. And that's it. You know how to lacto-ferment fruits. Now, this is a really small example of how you can use them. The possibilities truly are limitless. You can even dehydrate the skins and make seasoning out of it. There's just so, so many options. But do you want to know what else has a lot of options? B-roll. <laughs> And that is it. So, lacto fermentation plus fruits equals a good time, okay? A real good time. Just takes a little bit of patience, you know? Now this vacuum sealing method actually comes from the restaurant Noma in their book, The Noma Guide to Fermentation. So if you want to, if you guys want to get that book, that'll also be in the description. I love Noma. I'm obsessed with Noma. Renee Red Zippy. If you're watching this, I love you. I would really love to collaborate with you. So hit me up, please, please. You know, fermentation in general always opens up tons and tons of new windows. It's a great community thing, so be sure to send me all the things that you guys are making. I love seeing it. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. We don't talk anymore. Shit.